everything hinges on this. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, the stock market fate hangs on the next 72 hours. And I want you to understand why the next 72 hours is so critical for the path of stocks. Plus, I've got a whole bunch of trade setups for you today, which is why we like to look at the technicals, the momentum and machine positioning of the broad equity and bond markets to give you the edge you need to be a better trader and investor. And with that, now let's head over to Goldman where we picked today's story up with a headline from their tactical flow of funds report. This is a February preview as a January risk rally check as the S&P notches its fifth consecutive closing all-time high. In fact, Goldman notes, they're so bullish on stocks right now that they're turning tactically bearish in February. And what is the reason for this off? Well, there isn't one. That's the problem. But we'll see over the next 72 hours what the case could be as the most compelling reason for a potential sell-off is that they can't find one. And when everybody is bullish and everyone's piled in on one direction of the market, somehow it finds a way to go the other. And there is a catalyst that let's look at it's coming over the next 72 hours that could change the entire path forward for the market this year. And here are the eight key things on the radar, both focus on the most important ones as the Super Bowl of Earnings is here next week. 32% of the S&P 500 reports, the bar for earnings is set low. The bar for the Magnificent Seven, well, that's not so low at all. And why this matters is because when you see a market rallying on, on the buy side, analysts that sell stocks from buy side firms, they want you to buy as much stocks as possible. And one of the easiest ways they do that is by making their projections for earnings below what the actual expected target is. Now, these analysts have a lot of data. They know the information, so they lower the bar so these companies can hop over it. So what you will start to hear is company beats, beats, another one, beat and beat and beat. And when that happens, stocks go bonkers. Investors get excited to say that the companies are beating expectations. The problem is the math is in seven isn't so lucky. There have been no change to fundamental investor positioning this week, but fear of materially underperforming the equity indexes has increased considerably among the client base at Goldman. And the generals, Microsoft reports on January 30th, Google as well, Apple on February 1st, as well as Amazon and Meta, and that's 32% of QQQ reporting in two days, that covering them going into the 72 hour period where there's even some more companies reporting. And after being downward weighted by index providers and the most important stocks in the world, I haven't seen this type of begrudgingly forced into AI in quite some time. But here's the issue. February is a tricky month for risk assets as cash stops making its way into the equity market as especially toward the end of the month. And February is the second worth monthly seasonal for the S&P since 1928. And only September has a worth monthly performance. In fact, the second half of February is the worst two-week period of the year before the S&P since 1928. So we're setting up this seasonal issue here for the S&P at a time when the Magnificent Seven is going into earnings. And the bar for them, unlike everyone else, is actually set rather high. And that's the issue over the next 72 hours is we're going to see these mega cap companies start to report. And unlike everyone else in the market, these companies, analysts are undervaluing, of course, earnings for a lot of companies, but not the big ones. And that's the issue here. If we see earnings miss, watch for their stocks to gap down, watch for everyone to have a change in position. But one thing that isn't likely to change on that is how the machines are handling here because their equity position is pretty much full. Don't expect a whole lot of buying from machines going forward. But the good news is they're a long ways away from their downside triggers here. So let's take a look now at our own position here, our own momentum and technical signals to see where the market is headed. Plus, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I've got a ton of trade setups for you. Let's check them out. Let's start out with the S&P 500. Momentum has been positive. In fact, going back to November 3rd, we had to buy it open on this. That trade is now 12.53%. Now, one of the things that people ask me all the time is, Steve, do your reports or tell me how to sell or how do I know when to sell? My friends, use stop losses. That's why every week we show you when we've got a gain, what do we do? Raise the stop loss level up, try to hold on to that. Now, where is the upside target for this? Well, that's a good question. It's 
it's going to go and well until the sellers arrive downside target that's been revised to 468.61 notice when we look at our machine position this is on the fast algorithm this is on our slower one max long on the machines and what do we know from a momentum perspective on our one month three month then even six month we're pretty much at extreme levels here but let's take a look at the chart because there's not a whole lot to say other than the fact that the s p 500 here is breaking out it's technically overbought but that's okay it can keep going higher until sellers arrive that's a key point let's go on to qqq because if you're looking for a trade well we can forget about some of these major indices if you're looking for opportunity i'm going to show you some things that are really beaten up from momentum and a machine positioning standpoint where opportunity really lies now if you're in one of these trades great remember use your stop losses raise them up as you're making money what do we see on QQQ? Momentum's positive. The RSI here is at 70. MACD's got a positive cross. Well, that should be the least of anyone's problems. Technically, this thing is strong. 14 consecutive daily buy signals. We're nearly maxed out across every window on our Momentum Time Pro report. Our CTA report looks again at the machine position. That's maxed out. We had this buy it open back on October 9th. You go back and look at the show. We told you this is what you want. You're up almost 17%. Now, if you want to get and take advantage of our subscription. There are links in the description below. There are currently three coupon codes for a free month, one for CTA, one for Momentum Time Pro. If you get to checkout and there's no way to put the code in, that means three people beat you to it. Now, good news is, in the near term very soon we're going to be putting these signals right on the first page people said we want to know when the signals flip when we should be buying that is coming very soon jump on this while you can again raising our stop loss level up here to 411 26 downside target still at 403 but again from a chart perspective of course we'll get earnings going into the first 72 hours of the trading week what we notice is tech stocks are gapping they've gapped up they're going vertical they're breaking out where are the sellers well we can get a little bit of a picture yeah, there's some selling here we'll see how earnings go this is just too early of a picture to tell if this is the next supply zone or not but let's talk about opportunity because we have to look at XLU. Now, this is an interesting one because on our machine positioning, this is nearly max short. You see our fast algorithm is short. Our slow algorithm is short. These are good signs on a momentum base. Here we look at our momentum timer pro that takes all these things like the RSI and the MACD and a bunch of other these technical signals, smooths them all out. 11 consecutive daily sell signals. So it's telling us momentum to the downside along with the one month window. Now we're not saying take a position on this. This is something to look for a reversal. The problem here, when you look at the chart, it's outright kind of ugly and tells you that perhaps these major companies are going to see a reversal at some point because look at this this is the utility sector every rally met with sellers this thing looking like a massive topping pattern if this does break down there will be an opportunity here but for the moment we're not suggesting you do that there could be a short-term run up here to the 6398 level and that would make for a nice trade if we see a flip in position but there's some other things to look at Things are in even better shape than now we see momentum turning. And one of those we've talked about is iShares China's large cap ETF, symbol FXI. In fact, we're putting a buy it open now on Monday, January 29th. And why are we doing that? Well, we talked about this on the show yesterday, how our signals on our CTA had flipped in that position on Friday. But since the show here was coming Sunday, we'll go ahead and put that position in on Monday. And notice what happened. We were at max short, minus 100, minus 100. Now, what's going to happen when we get the updated reports? The signals, when they flip, will be on the first page. We'll show you. These are the ones you want. Now, look at the other one here, Momentum Timer Pro. We have three consecutive daily buy signals pairing the fact that technically this thing's changed, the machine position has changed, and look at the RSI. It's a 47, it's come up off that oversold territory. MACD's got a positive cross. They're saying set your stop loss at 21.15 because I've gotten burned on this before by saying put a trade on and not putting a stop loss on, so we're not gonna do that. Upside level now, 50 day moving average. Downside level, 20.86 just below it. Let's take a look at FXI here. And we see that the last time it got down to this level, it rallied up about over 50%. Now, that would be huge. But what we're looking at right now is just tagging the bottom side of its 21-day moving average. This is usually how you start to see bottoms form as they start fighting against one of the faster moving averages. 
Upside potential here, we're looking at the 50-day moving average with a bigger move up to 26 10 is the target but technically look at this it's bounced off of overbought terror or sold territory once twice now starting to rally macd is confirming this thing is looking beautiful make sure you set your stop loss on this let's look at another one we got some great signals this is exactly the signal we want to see and this is exactly what you get as a subscriber how about hong kong symbol ewh i told you i'm going to give you a bunch of trade signals today well here is one right off the report momentum has now turned positive how do you sew that under momentum time pro one daily buy signal but it's coming off a sell mid on the one month that's strong look at our cta it's coming off max short position on the buying signal again this is going to be featured on the first page we're also going to have signals from momentum time pro we're going to revise those those are coming up we'll put a buy it open on monday set your stop loss at 1551 upside target 1701 for the next first move let's take a look at ewh here now i don't have any lines drawn in on this because i want to show you, you don't necessarily need to do that some people wonder like, how do i do all that you don't have to because when momentum and machine positioning changes you see these upside moves here you see the volume profile line acting like a magnet Every time price is broken down below, it kind of magnet, it comes like a magnet, gets gravitated up to that level. That's our first target. That's what we're looking at for a nice short-term trade. If that holds and breaks out, of course, we'll keep a track on this and advise you where we think this is headed from there. Let's talk about the bond market because now the CTAs are looking to be potential sellers in a flat tape. They're going to do some profit taking of around 42 billion. This is a global equities up tape. They're still next sellers over in the following week down tape. They're selling 90 billion over the next week. But how about this over the next month? They're selling 88 billion global bonds and an up tape. They're net buyers, but in a down tape. Well, they're really cashing in. They're afraid. But make the case of maybe why we're going to see bonds potentially break out here. Let's take a look at our screens here because TLT is negative. This is a long bond. Now, our trade, we had a bunch of these because they didn't put a stop loss in. Our cost basis is still 96.18. We're down 2.5%. Many of you said we would never even get to even. We did that, but I didn't put a stop loss on. I'm going to let this thing fly. Friday's closing still at 93.78, so we haven't moved much from last week, but look at the RSI. It's nearly in oversold territory, coming right off of that. MACD's got a negative cross, and machine positioning on the fast side is max short. We got 16 consecutive days of sell signals, and we have a sell max. Now, this is a great signal, because when we have a sell max on a one-month window, and then this turns positive, that's gonna be featured on page one coming soon. And then if you see a flip on this 100% short, well, you can add a position. We're gonna we're gonna hold off on adding any more to this at this time, but those are the signals you're looking for to add a position. Let's look at TLT here because what you see is a big rally some profit taking pulls down into the supply zone so you see the two purple lines how do we know it's a supply zone because this is where people have been buying or selling you see in the past this is where people bought then they sold then they bought now they're coming down here and what are they doing they're buying here right on that zone we get some upside move here the next retest the big one is up here to this double dashed green line that is a major supply zone up there where the sellers were last at that would be a bigger move up to that potential breakout takes us all the way up to the top side before the moment we just want to see this kind of get through the next week because of all the machine positioning here if the bond market holds out on that that would be fantastic move really kind of give you some confidence to look for a flip in the signals and say that yes this thing is indeed about to take off now maybe you think gold is going to break out way out of this four top high can you imagine that four peaks i want you to think of this you know when an army attacks this is where you have to look at the market here and they get rejected four times at the same point and everyone thinks well maybe the fifth maybe the sixth or maybe there's just not enough buyers left let's take a look at the tacticals here because what we see is the RSI is at 47. Skin is coming off kind of some oversold territory here. Magni's got a negative cross. Nine consecutive daily sell signals. We're not saying take a position. There's other opportunities out there, and there just isn't anything to get super excited here. Looking at machine position, they're still slightly net long. We see technicals are shifting to the downside, but nothing really in an extreme level. And that's one thing I want to encourage you. If you're looking for opportunities, get past your bias and look for things that have deeply oversold conditions that's where you're likely to make your most money and take your least amount of risk you throw a stop loss under that and you are good to go now let's take a look at gld here 
because what I can see is it just doesn't look too exciting from a trade at this point. Now, if you own physical metal and that's something you keep in home, that's fine. You do what you need to do with that. We're talking about trading this from a, a simple share transaction, one top, two top, three top, four, you know, it gets rejected the same level here. I think if you're looking for an opportunity to trade GLD, I would wait for this thing to come down. Maybe even let's take a look at GDX as a much better opportunity here. But if you're waiting, I got lots of other things. We have some more coming for you. Hang tight. Here we see Vanek Gold Miners, G symbol GDX. Momentum still negative. RSI near oversold territory. Magni's got a negative cross. There's 18 days of sell signals on our tactical report. So there you go. You see a sell max. This is what you're looking for. This is like one of the best signals this thing generates. If you see a sell max on a one month window, and then you see one plus one on the daily count, that is your opportunity. Now look at the CTA report. It's buying off a max short. So what we noted here, wait for MTB signal, plus one on the daily before buying. Right now, upside target 2904, downside target still a little bit below. There still is a potential this thing could dip back down. Let's take a look here and see. We notice the price came down, buyers stepped in, they got rejected at the 100 day moving average, and now they're just kind of running out of steam here. If this rolls over and heads down, that's your bigger opportunity. You can play this to the upside on a plus signal when you see MTP, click on that. And then if you are, you're looking for a bigger move up here to the 31 and a quarter. Makes for a nice trade here compared to GLD. And that's what we like to see is where opportunities are at. Now let's talk about silver. This is one of those things we got stopped out of. And why did that happen? Well, for one simple reason, I put a buy signal on here and I forgot to put a stop loss on big mistake don't do that so this is a good lesson from steve here we just got stopped out down 8.17 percent here's the problem the signals have reversed and now we have a buy open on, uh, on monday for this one because look we're buying off a max short position we see a sell max with a plus one on the daily buy count there's the signal we want and with that, it tells us we got to get into this on a buy it open on Monday. Let's take a look at SLV here because what we can see technically is starting to rebound. Again, better opportunity here than you see in GLD. Look at this. We see it come down here to virtually oversold territory. It's bouncing off. MACD's got a positive cross. It ran right into this volume profile line, hit some sellers here, but notice the sellers weren't too aggressive. This thing has the potential, again, to break break out and if we zoom out well if it breaks above this volume profile line it generally gets somewhere between this 2240 and roughly 23 plus price range so big opportunity here if this holds in silver and again like that trade even though we got beaten up that's why i said this time what does it say here ah, i forgot to put the stop loss on again oh boy well let's put a stop loss on we'll verbally say put that on there around 20 spot 07 uh, make sure you trade that accordingly because uh, you cannot keep doing this without a stop loss it is not the way to do it how about let's look at palladium how about what the opportunity is here look max short across the machine position 17 consecutive daily sell signals and a sell max how do i want to look at this wait for confirming signals wait for the machine position to flip off the short signal and wait for this minus 17 to turn to a plus one let's take a look at palladium here again i don't need to look at a lot of this stuff but look at this over the last one year the volume profile, what does that tell you? The buyers are stepping in and supporting this level over the last 12 months. That's a good sign. You notice the MACD about to make a positive cross. That would help our signals. You see the RSI moving hard. That would help our technical signals. A little bit of a price rally. And there's your next trade on Palladium. Again, if you're looking for opportunity, we've got a bunch of them. How about DBA? This one we're up 2.34% on. Raise the stop loss level up. That is critical. 20 spot 25 is where we got that at. Upside target, we hit that. Now we're moving higher to 2189 on DBA. Let's take a look at where DBA is headed here. And that is, I think, going even higher. Potentially, you know, one of the catalysts is we have the Fed meeting next week. The PCA came in showing downward trend in inflation, getting to the Fed's target. Well, if they start talking again, rate cuts later this year, the dollar again gets weaker. There's a boon for U.S. commodities, boon for silver, boon for a lot of things. 
check this out. This thing's looking like it's about to break even higher. Let's zoom out to the two year chart. It came down deep into this zone. And then have we seen in the past when it gets down here, well, if it breaks past the first supply zone, which it did, it can get to the second one, maybe get up to this volume profile line at 2196 that would be a nice trade there and so we see great setup there you, that one we're in on how about another one on soybeans this one is perhaps a great one right off the reports look we came off the cta level of a max short position but look at momentum time pro 39 consecutive daily sell signals you've got sell conditions on the one month three month six month window this thing's beaten up but what we want to see is a sell max here on the one month this switch to a plus one so again wait for momentum time pro to flip on this one upside potential 2638 with well, the current price 2537 looks like it's soybeans because if dba continues to go the market's not going to ignore soybeans and you can see when it gets down in these levels let's zoom out to the five-year chart when it gets down in these levels before buyers have stepped in but actually what's going on in the red sea we could see a further slowdown in commerce and trade dealing with commodities there could be a lot of buyers stepping in here to take advantage of this upside potential 2750 with a potential breakout here up to the roughly 29 price level that my friends would be huge and of course with that as always we want to thank you for being fans being subscribers check out the reports they make a huge difference in your trade and as always i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now